Advanced maternal age, what it is, what it means, what you should know if you're trying to get pregnant at age 35 or higher. Hi friends, I'm Dr. Natalie Crawford. I'm a board certified OBGYN and REI. So I'm a fertility doctor and I talk about age and fertility all the time. And most of my patients are going to be over age 35. And I also see patients every single day who schedule an appointment with me to get their fertility checked because they're 35. This number has been drilled into our brains and a lot of times we don't even know why, it just is. And so I'm gonna tell you why this number exists, what it, what it really means for us, and how we can think about our fertility, but also our health and pregnancy as we start to get older. So the first thing to realize is that this number was chosen because of one, it is the combination of the decrease in fertility rates that we see. And in fact, the definition of infertility even has this number in it, right? If you've been trying to get pregnant for 12 months or less and you're under age 35 equals infertility, or if you've been trying to get pregnant less than six months and you're over age 35, then that counts as infertility. So the fact that this number is even in that definition obviously shows that it is important in the fertility scheme. But the reason why it is also is because we start to see an increase in genetic abnormalities, miscarriage, essentially an increase in chromosome abnormalities, abnormal eggs. And the way I always think about this is if you imagine your eggs are in a vault inside your ovary, those eggs are there from the moment you're born. And those chromosomes are held in this perfect stage of cell division, and they don't migrate into separation until you ovulate. So we are expecting your body to have your proteins keep these chromosomes in perfect position all these years. And what really happens is that proteins break down in our body and a lot of things can influence this like inflammation and toxins, things like smoking cigarettes or chemotherapy, BPA, environmental toxins, chronic inflammation, endometriosis, those things can actually impact our eggs and our chromosome stability. We see though, just even naturally, if you're the healthiest person on earth, that the rate of chromosome normalcy is going to decrease as you get older because those chromosomes start to lose their normal position. And this is seen and reflected in an abnormal number of eggs. I tell my patients at age 35, it's about 50-50 for how many eggs are normal and how many are abnormal. And we know that number because we do IVF and we do genetic testing and we can see embryos on that end. It's important to realize that these two factors came together for this recommendation from ACOG, that 35 is this advanced maternal age, but also because of the increase in just medical problems that you start to see as you get older. So into your upper 30s and older, we start to see higher prevalence of high blood pressure and high cholesterol, thyroid disease and diabetes. And those things do influence pregnancy outcomes, especially high blood pressure or the risk of preeclampsia and complications with pregnancy. And so that is why ACOG has certain recommendations for things to think about if you're trying to get pregnant over age 35. And then of course, as a fertility doctor, I have my own thoughts. So one is just to know your fertility rates. Max fertility, chances of getting pregnant per month or fecundability is going to be higher the, the younger you are. So under age 30, you're gonna have about a 20 to 25% chance of getting pregnant per month. As you get older, that number is going to drop, especially if you've never had a child before. So your chance of getting pregnant at age 34 to 35 is now gonna to drop to 11 to 12% per month. So that's a significant drop from where you were at age 30. Then if we up the ante to 30 to 39, now it's 5% per month. And then if we say, what about 42? Now it's 3% per month. And this data comes from Natural Fertility Prospective Data by Ann Steiner. This is the Time to Conceive cohort. Also in the study, we know that fertility rates are higher if you've had a child in the past for a lot of different reasons, but so probably because you've already proven that egg and sperm can work and you can carry a baby and your tubes are open. So if you're waiting to start your family until age 38, you're now gonna accept a 5% chance of pregnancy per month, but what if you wanna have more than one child? I don't know that you're gonna have infertility, but are you gonna have the fertility lifespan to have the family you want? That is why a fertility discussion is very important 
If you want to have a big family, you haven't started your family, or you're just getting started, or even if you want multiple kids and you're 35 and older, we really need to start looking at the full picture. Now, when it comes to is pregnancy safe? If you are 35 and older, your pregnancy will be labeled high risk. Advanced maternal age automatically gets you that declaration. Don't be offended by it, okay? This is because statistically, you have a higher chance of preeclampsia, which is high blood pressure of pregnancy, of gestational diabetes, even if you don't have diabetes, even if you're healthy right now, of shoulder dystocia, of having a baby that's stuck in the birth canal, and of C-section. So they want people observing you differently, paying closer attention to your prenatal care to try to prevent some of those outcomes from happening. Also, your chance of having a baby who's born premature, has to go to the NICU, or is low birth weight is higher if you are 35 or older. So getting more observation is not a bad thing. All of these risks don't just start when you turn 35. It's a gradual scale. They always exist. Somebody who's young can have just the same complications. But as you get older and advance through age groups, these risks proportionately increase. All right, so what are we going to do about this. So one of the first recommendations is that if you're 35 or older is to take a daily low dose aspirin because in studies that has been shown to be helpful in preventing preeclampsia. This recommendation is if you're 35 and older, you initiate low dose aspirin. So an 81 milligram starting up between 12 to 16 weeks. So by the end of the first trimester, if you have one other factor, so you're 35, if it's your first baby, so you're nulla paris. If you are overweight, if your BMI is over 30, if you have any family history of preeclampsia, so your mom or your sister had high blood pressure in pregnancy, if you're African-American, right away, you got it. You're African-American, you're 35, baby aspirin for you. If you have lower income, so if you're in a lower socioeconomic class, you should be started on baby aspirin because your risk of these outcomes is higher. And then also personal history factors. So if you've had a prior preterm birth or prior pregnancy outcomes, if you've had a long pregnancy interval, and then if you have known high blood pressure, if you have multiple babies, if you've got twins or more, if you know you have type one diabetes or kidney disease or lupus. So if you're 35 or older and you have one of those other factors, you should start on a baby aspirin. And it's worth noting that African-American, part of the reason why is due to systemic racism that exists in obstetrics. And we know that black mothers have a higher risks, higher likelihood of preeclampsia and adverse outcomes. So part of that is to try to prevent some of these bad outcomes, but that's at least being acknowledged by the American College of OBGYN and there's a long way to go. All right, because there is a risk of multiples as you get older, even if you don't do fertility treatment, you should get a first trimester ultrasound. This is pretty standard in most places, but not everywhere. And interestingly, as you get older and you have less eggs, your brain is going to send out a stronger signal of FSH to try to get you to ovulate. And that stronger signal increases the risk of ovulating two eggs and having spontaneous twins. All right, and then of course there is the recommendation to have screening for genetic diseases. So prenatal genetic screening, looking at non-invasive prenatal testing, talking about amniocentesis, looking at nuchal translucency. One thing is that people come to me and they all the time expect that they're going to have a baby with a genetic abnormality. And I think the thing to think about is these fecundability rates as they get lower, a lot of the reason why is that increased rate of genetic abnormality and what it's telling you is that most genetic abnormal embryos just don't implant. You just have a negative test. And then secondarily would be an increased chance of miscarriage. The chance of having a pregnancy with a genetic abnormality that then is going to kind of result in a pregnancy is, is lower, but it's not zero. And here's a chart just showing you a little bit of the difference. So if we look at chromosome 21 or Down syndrome, you can see that if you're age 20, the risk is one in 1,250. If you're 30, one in 714. And if you're 40, it's one in 86. So definitely an increase in seeing that chromosome abnormality. Then if we go to all chromosome abnormalities, if you're 20, we can see it's one in 122. If you're 30, it's one in 110. And if you're 40, it's one in 40. This is a huge reason why IVF with genetic testing is starting to be recommended more and more, especially as we get older. You can see that once you get 35 and over, you're seeing the chance being one in less than 100 
that you're going to see some type of chromosome abnormality in a pregnancy. So if we can diagnose that before you ever get pregnant, it might save you a lot of heartbreak and get you to that life where baby in your arms a lot faster. So then some other recommendations are going to be a detailed anatomy scan because that can also help check for birth defects and check for some of these genetic abnormalities. And you're going to see ultrasound for growth in the third trimester. So these things are just important because if you're not getting ultrasounds and you're older, you want to be asking the question about should, should we check the size of the baby? When should I have my next ultrasound? And then if you're 40, you also want to start getting some monitoring once you get further along in the pregnancy because there is an increased risk of stillbirth as you get older. So if we look at everybody, the rate of stillbirth is about six babies out of a thousand pregnancies. And if you are older, then you're going to see it getting higher. So if you're 40, it's going to be closer to 10 babies out of a thousand births. The association with stillbirth once you're over age 35 exists even when we control for other factors like high blood pressure and diabetes. So it's definitely a known risk. Also, the further along the pregnancy goes, the higher the rate increases. So if you are between 37 to 41 weeks and you are between 35 and 40, your risk is one in 382. But suddenly now, if you're now past 41 weeks, even if you're just in the 35 to 40 group, that rate is now 6%. And if you're over age 40, then it's gonna be closer to 8%. So watching the babies as you, this placenta is older and it's growing into an older uterus, the blood supply is what really is the key here. So this prenatal monitoring means putting the baby on non-stress tests, having better antenatal surveillance. And there's a lot of different ways that places can do this, but typically if you are over age 35, and specifically if you're over age 40, some type of fetal antenatal surveillance between gestational age 32 to 36 weeks should be something that you think about. And then delivery is also recommended earlier, especially because of these risks. And even more so if you're older. So if you're over age 40, strong recommendation that you should be delivering in the 39th week and not going to 40 weeks because of that progressive increased risk of stillbirth. Overall, most of my patients get pregnant when they're over age 35 and they do great. So I don't want you guys to be afraid. But I think it's always something you want to be really taking charge of your health. So you should know, are you a candidate? Should you be on baby aspirin? Should you be getting extra surveillance with ultrasound or fetal monitoring? And really always trying to control those other health factors as your general health does matter a lot with the pregnancy. Your own taking care of your body is the number one thing that you can do, especially if you're older and pregnant. But most pregnancies, even at older ages, do just fine. And that age 35 is not just a steep cutoff. I see so many patients who think they just can't be pregnant and that's not the case. So don't live in that world but live in the world knowing you are at a higher risk and the best thing you can do is advocate for yourself and make sure you're taking care of yourself in the best way possible. All right, hope this helped answer a couple questions. Hope it didn't scare you too much. These are just medical facts that I'm trying to share with you. All of this data came from the ACOG practice bulletin about advanced maternal age. I will link it down below, ask questions, and you can always follow along on Instagram for more information or the As A Woman podcast. Thanks friends.